Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, we're going to take a look at section 5. It's entitled The Nullification Crisis. We're going to analyze a political cartoon, get some thoughts out there, and uh, do some reading, do some writing, and do some checking of our notes. So uh, put your thinking caps on and let's take a look at some info about the nullification crisis. So first things first, what are we seeing in this cartoon? Look at the details. Look at uh, what's going on. Uh, do your best to try to figure out what some of these words say, and uh, let's do some thinking. So what do you see? Now if you take a look, we've got uh, a guy trying to reach for a crown. We've got another guy trying to hold back one of these guys. Uh, we've got some dead people down there. It looks like it says Constitution and E Pluribus Unum on their sashes. Very symbolic of stuff. Uh, another group over here who's being... Um, walked on their backs uh, up these stairs. You see a lot of words like nullification, treason, civil war, deception, and then at the very top we got despotism. So those are some details that we need to take note of. So the guy at the top of the staircase, what might he be doing? Take a look at what he's reaching for. Uh, what is that symbolic of? What is he up to? Why do you think the guy on the right side is pulling on the coattails of another? Uh, what is that showing? What is that telling us? What I want you to do is read through your section 5 uh, in your text. Complete the reading notes for this section. Make sure that you're doing it. So just hit pause on this uh, thing so you can read through it, get those details. What you're going to do again is add dialogue to the speech bubbles like we've done in the past to reflect how Northerners and Southerners might have felt about the new tariff law of 1828. Uh, the words you want to be making sure you use are tariff and secede. And then, of course, the last question is, do you think Jackson's response to the nullification crisis promoted democracy? Why or why not? That's our uh, essential question, our theme for this chapter, so make sure you're thinking about that. Now, also take note that uh, our people have changed a little bit. We've got a northerner, uh, generally like a guy who has a business or runs a factory or something like that. And then we've got a southerner whose uh, economy is based on agriculture. So in all likelihood, we've got a southern farmer. So um, you've got your two different groups of people. Let's take a look at their point of view. So go ahead and hit pause, read through section five, and do what you can to get those notes completed. All right, welcome back. So what did Northerners feel about the new tariff law of 1828? This guy might have said, well, we support the new tariff law. Higher prices for imported factory goods mean we can sell products made in our factories. So Northerners, sounds like they like this new tariff law. So let's hear the Southerners' point of view. What do they think about this tariff law in 1828? The new tariff law is unconstitutional. The tariff Tariffs hurt our cotton sales to other countries. We will secede if the government tries to enforce this law. So those are some pretty incendiary words, words that, uh, you know, a lot of threats going on in there. So um, take a look at those differences between Northerners and Southerners. Let's go back to our political cartoon. Uh, let's look at this image about the nullification crisis. Uh, the man at the top of the stairs is John C. Calhoun. That's Andrew Jackson's vice president. Andrew Jackson is actually portrayed as the man pulling on the coattails of a Calhoun supporter. So he's trying to stop these guys uh, from grabbing that crown and getting to that top and taking these steps towards uh, really dismantling the United States. The word despotism is at the top of the cartoon. Okay, now despotism is a form of government in which a ruler is an absolute dictator. That means uh, the whole country answers to this one person and he makes decisions that affect the whole country. So um, what is this political cartoonist trying to say here with this crown and John C. Calhoun being portrayed as grabbing the crown towards despotism? Uh, if you see any words that are unfamiliar to you, make sure you take a look and look those up. You've got nullification, you've got the South Carolina ordinance, you've got the word treason, civil war, deception, and then disunion. If any of those words are unfamiliar to you, make sure you take a look at them. Nullification, remember, is um, stopping um, or not recognizing or um, 
abiding by a law set forth by the federal government. Then you've got the South Carolina Ordinance. This was the, the threat to secede by uh, South Carolina. Then you've got treason, which is going against one's government. You've got civil war, which is a war happening within one country. Uh, then you've got deception, where you're trying to um, uh, be devious. You're not telling the truth. You're saying one thing and doing another. And then you've got disunion, which means we are no longer united. So look those words up. Make sure you're familiar with them. What does the cartoonist imply that Calhoun wants? So take a look at what he's grabbing for. Think about what despotism means, and I think we'll get an idea of that here in just a second. Why, why would the cartoonist think that Jackson's response, what would the cartoonist think of uh, Jackson's response to the nullification crisis? Would he say that it promoted democracy? Why or why not? So think about what's happening here. Think about the groups that are being affected, and um, we should be... Uh, ready to roll an understanding of the nullification crisis, but make sure you've got your notes read, make sure that you've got um, your text read, your notes filled out, all of that good stuff, and watch the videos, ladies and gentlemen. Do you agree with this? Think about it. All right, we'll see you next section.